Everybody, this is a guided walkthrough for Nadis level 4. So the first thing we want to do on any of these Nadis levels is to access the level by adjusting the address bar over here. We replace the, um, the number in the address bar with the level that we want to access. So in this case, it's going to be Nadis level 4. It's going to ask, it, it's going to ask you for a username and a password. So the username, make sure that it says Nadis level 4. And then the username is going to be Nadis4, and the password is going to be whatever password you got from the last level. And then click on Sign In, and then you're in. Okay, so we see here that um, on the Nadis Level 4 landing page, it says Access Disallowed. You are visiting from blank string, while authorized users should come only from this URL address right here. So HTTP natis5.natis.labs.overthewire.org. So what we're talking about in this level is we're talking about HTTP headers, and we're talking about a specific HTTP header. But uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that right now. So in Natis level four, we're talking about HTTP headers. So each time a web browser accesses a web page, the browser makes an HTTP request to the server that hosts the page. In each HTTP request, several headers and their values are passed along to the server to ensure that the browser and server can communicate properly. So some examples of HTTP headers and what info they provide to the web server are as follows. So there's the host header, which provides the, the website that is being contacted. Uh, for example, Natis4 over the wire.org. Uh, there's the user agent header, which specifies the type of web browser that is making the request. For example, the Chrome web browser or any other type of web browser. And the accept header is the type of data that should be sent in response. So for example, star slash star, which means any type of data. Please keep in mind that because HTTP headers can be modified by the user before being sent, that means that the values of any HTTP headers could be spoofed, that is falsified, although default web browser behavior doesn't allow this. So when you're using your regular old web browser, um, whatever, default, uh, whatever default HTTP headers that you're sending are going to be the ones that you're going to send. But when you're using uh, other tools, you could potentially falsify or modify your HTTP headers to whatever you want. The next thing we're going to be talking about is the HTTP refer header. So the HTTP refer, the HTTP refer header which is misspelled on purpose for some reason, contains the value of a complete or partial address of the web page that is making the request. So the HTTP refer header lets the website know which web page that you're coming from when you arrive on that site. This allows the web server to identify which web page users are visiting it from. So the data from this header could be used for analytics and logging, etc., etc. However, some developers attempt to use the value as of the refer header as a type of security mechanism for which it was not designed. So to take advantage of using custom HTTP headers, or header values rather, we're going to be using the, uh, the curl program, or the CURL program. So the curl program is a command line interface or that is CLI app that is common to all major computer operating systems. So if you're using any, if you're using any regular desktop computer, so if you're using Linux or if you're using Mac or if you're using Windows, you will have the uh, the curl program installed on your uh, on your computer. So let's go over to some terminal, and we could uh, curl, and we can curl Google.com. So what this does, oh, the document is moved. It goes to here. OK, let's go to google.com using curl. OK, and uh, so basically what the curl command does is that it provides you with, um, with the terminal method 
of accessing web pages. So when you access google.com, it's going to send you, well, first of all, you're going to send it a bunch of, a bunch of HTTP headers over here. So the hosts and the, um, and the user agent and the accept and in request in response, you're going to get a bunch of HTTP response headers over here. So you're going to get the, uh, the date header, the expires header, a lot of different headers, and then you're going to get the content of the web page. So <laughs> the reason why we, uh, why we use web browsers is because it turns all of this web, um, all of this HTTP code, and it turns it into something that you can actually understand. So if you go over to google.com, this is the web browser version of this information right over here. So that was the curl program. And uh, this program allows for access to web pages from the CLI, but only returns text such as HTML code. So this is the thing. Curl can be used to the application allows for the modification of various HTTP variables, uh, which normal web browsers are not capable of unless modified. So basically it's, um, it's a very powerful program and you can send different web requests to web pages and you can modify different, um, different values before you send those requests off. So we're going to be using the curl program to access this, um, the, the web page for Natus level this is not as level four. Yeah, not as level four. And uh, let's talk about what parts of the command there are over here. Okay, so the curl command, um, the, the syntax is very long. So we're gonna be talking about the, uh, the different parts of the command. So the first thing in the curl command that we're gonna use is the command itself. So that's curl. And the second part of the command is gonna be the dash V. All right, so the second part over here, which is the dash V, this is the verbose output switch. So I like to get, I, I usually like to get as much information as I can from my, uh, from my tools. So that's where the dash V comes in. So the next one is the dash H, and this is the HTTP header argument. So basically we can supply custom headers with our HTTP requests using this argument here. So in this case, it's going to be refer, and then this content over here. We're going to supply the refer that, uh, that the Nattis page wants. So the Nattis page wants the refer header to have this value here. So we're going to give it this value here. Um, let's see. Next is number four, the user authentication argument. So when we, uh, when we use curl, we're going to have to simulate the user authentication, basically the login, by giving the login information. So we do dash u, which lets us set a username and then a colon and then the password for the level over here. The last thing we have to supply is the web page. So that's number five. So we're going to send a request to natus 4natuslabs over the wire.org. So let's go ahead and uh, craft that curl command in setter terminal. Whoops. Here. Okay. So when do when do you curl? And um, what do we need? We need to supply verbose. And what else do we need to supply? Let me go back. Ah, our our refer header. Okay. So we're going to do dash h, and it's going to be referrer. And the refer is, has to be the, uh, the specific page. So we're just going to grab the page from not as four, just like this. And then we're going to paste this in. Okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to supply a username. So we're not as four and the password, we're going to just going to grab the password from our GitHub repository here. And supply that. The last thing we need to do is we need to supply the uh, the 
page that we want to access. And the page we want to access is the Natus 4 page. So we're just going to copy this from the Natus 4 page, paste it in, and then we're going to give this request. So just hit enter. And what do we see here? So when we sent the request, it shows us our HTTP headers, and we sent these headers over here. So we sent the host header, the authentication header, which has all of our login information in it, and we set the refer header to natus5.natus.labs.overthewire.org, which is what the, the level wants. So after that, we get our HTTP request, uh, sorry, our response headers, which include the, uh, the code, which is 200 OK. We get the date, the server information, the very, the content length, the content type, and um, this is all very interesting. Um, but what the most important thing that we see here is that in the in the request in the uh, HTTP body, we get this message here: "Access granted." The password for Natus Five is this password right over here. So, to finish the level, we're just going to grab the password and copy it, and then we're going to. go over to our wherever we're collecting our passwords and we're going to store it in there. Okay, let's talk about what we covered in today's, uh, sorry, let's talk about what we covered in this level of the Natus CTF game. So the username was Natus4, the password was this. The web vulnerability in this case was the HTTP refer header was used as a security, was used as a security mechanism, which is not how it's supposed to be used. So the method of solve for this level is Use curl to access the page to supply the custom, the custom HTTP referrer header. And we've got a uh, command in curl that we can uh, use to solve the level over here. All right, so everybody, that was a guided walkthrough for the Natus 4 level from the Natus CTF game hosted over at overthewire.org. If you enjoyed this guided walkthrough, please click on the like and subscribe buttons on the video and leave a comment underneath the video. But until next time, Hacker Frogs out. Hey there, Hacker Frogs. Are you enjoying this workshop? Learning new concepts and skills? If so, there's a way you can support the channel and it's totally free. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Also, click on the like button. And if you have questions or comments on this workshop, please leave them below the video. Thanks for listening. And now, back to our scheduled programming.